Those of you who don't know, Isaac's been a long time uh, tactical response alumni or alumnus. Mm -hmm. uh, when did you take your first class, Isaac? I believe it was 2012. Okay, so over a decade, right? You've you've been yeah kind of running through our stuff, see eye to eye on on how we feel about the Second Amendment and all that stuff. It it kept you coming back, right? Mm -hmm. Literally, this was the first training that I have ever taken that taken that really matched up with my mindset. I got done with awesome. fighting pistol, and I was like, I have found the place to train. This is what reflects me. So awesome. So it was uh, what, what two years ago now, or was it a year ago? Uh, do you want to run everybody through a uh, backstory of how how you came? to be a, or go from a Second Amendment advocate, someone who mm -hmm. enjoyed exercising their own Second Amendment rights, to becoming board member uh, on the NRA to try yeah. and help restore our Second Amendment rights? Yeah, you betcha. Um, I started off as literally a life member and joined because, frankly, Joey will attest, it made financial sense. I'm like, well, if this makes financial sense. I'll join the NRA. Uh, became, well, I'd been a member since I was a kid, since I was eight years old, but I became a life member with my wife, Heather, and I. We were at a gun show. They had a deal on life members. I'm like, all right, we'll join. Really no change from that point on, just a, a good Second Amendment advocate. And I knew a few different board members and passing said to one of them, hey, in about 10, 15 years when my life slows down a little bit, I'd be interested in going onto the board because I think there are some changes that need to be made and I'd like to affect that change. He said, great, I'll keep that in mind. I'll help you when you're ready. So my wife and I are attending a SUT. Uh, I was attending it for the second time and I got a phone call from that board member. And uh, Isaac, not to cut you off, but just for everybody who may not be aware, uh, that's oh, our... Sorry. Uh, high risk civilian contractor class mm -hmm. uh, here at Tactical Response, the small unit tactics uh, version of that class, which is the introductory uh, package. So that five day class then lets you take all of the other contractor classes here. Um, so it's learning to work in a team. Uh, but that is what Isaac's referring to as SUT. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, no, I apologize. You're right. I one of the biggest complaints for any uh, organization is the jargon, and here I just mm -hmm. uh, violated that. <laughs> so I was probably 20 or 30 classes in uh, with tactical response before I ever took that series of classes, and my wife wanted to take it, so I took it with her. And we were traveling out to dinner uh, with a few of the other students from that class, and on the way to dinner, I got a phone call from that board member, and he said, were you serious about going onto the board? And I said, yeah. He's like, we could use your expertise. Can you get me a resume by tomorrow? I said, nope. Damn. I'm in Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, my, my chances of getting a resume to somebody from Birdsong are pretty slim and none. Uh, so he said, can you, text me? Right. can you text me your resume? And I said, sure. Uh, so I texted him my resume and... Uh, basically, I was voted on to be a candidate, went through the election process and missed it, uh, missed it by one. So there was a runoff at the annual meeting and some tactical response alumni uh, came down to Houston, Texas uh, with me. They campaigned with me and I got elected to the board for a one year term. That one year term uh, was able to learn quite a bit about the NRA and then some, you know, got I guess, voted on to be up for election again, and I got reelected. And now I've been on for another year. So this is my second year. And then uh, next year, I guess, starting May to May, um, will be my third year on the board. So. Hell yeah, man. I remember and, that uh, meeting out in Houston. You guys were, were running around. Yeah. I didn't realize that you had missed the first chance. And so that, like, I was like, oh, yeah, they're serious about this. I didn't, so I, I didn't realize you had, like, a uh, motiv motivating factor other than just wanting it, right? Like, um, but yeah, well, no, so lo lots of tactical response alumni there, I know, pitched in to help out. 
Yeah, they really did. I mean, <laughs> literally from friends like Zach um, to Barry mm-hmm. and so on. You know, everyone was there to help out, which was great. Uh, we were on some other um, Facebook pages of other places that we trained, and they actually got introduced to tactile response alumni. Um, had really favorable opinions. Guys who had never trained were like, we'd always heard some things, but, you know, everyone that they met was squared away and they were so impressed with uh, the alumni from tactical response. And so yeah. really that's, that's why I guess I stayed on the board is I'm trying to affect that change that we want to see made. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's the only way to do it. Right. Like if we can change it from the inside, this is, this is the way. Um, and you mentioned that because of your expertise, they were mm. kind of wanting you to throw your hat in the ring there. Um, if you want to give like a quick, quick uh, synopsis of, of what yeah. your expertise is and why it might be so powerful, um, <laughs> you know, and you're kind of in a, a key position. Yeah. To affect so the one change. of the, the, the right. Uh, one of the, obviously, one of the motivating factors of any organization is its finances. And that happens to be what I excel in. Uh, so I do financial management for an investment firm. Uh, so I help manage the firm as well as managing a large portfolio for clients and have a lot of education, both in academic and professional in financial management. So the NRA, having gone through some financial woes, Uh, basically said, you know, we could really use somebody with his knowledge and expertise on the board to help us through this trying position. And so that is essentially, for lack of a better word, why they recruited me. And Mm. uh, thankfully to you guys, why I've been able to get reelected. So, Mm. Not to us. You're doing all the hard work. We're just kind of we're just kind of pushing it along a little bit, you know. Um, Very cool, man. You know, go on. Yeah. Well, just a little throw out to you guys. Um, <laughs> one of the things that the NRA would, they, they had a public relations, but obviously with some of the recent stuff going on uh, with some New York lawsuits, the NRA has been financially uh, crippled. And so some of the in payments to influencers had to stop because we just didn't have the budget for it anymore. Tactical response mm-hmm. has never flagged in their support of the NRA. So where other influencers basically said, yeah, you don't pay us, we're not going to promote you. Tactical response is like, no, this is a Second Amendment organization. We're going to get behind Isaac. We're going to get behind the NRA, and we're going to continue to support it one way or the other. And mm-hmm. so for that, you guys had my gratitude. And, dude, it, like, if you don't come train with us, then we can't train Mm -hmm. people if we can't train people we can't recommend they join the nra we can't recommend that they so it's it's a symbiotic relationship man um and at at the risk of kind of trying to bring us back on the tracks (laughs) Mm -hmm. um here so now everybody's got a little bit of an idea of of who you are i think maybe now we could kind of hit on the elephant in the room right uh like yeah so LaPierre's gone, mm. right? Wayne LaPierre, yeah. or uh, so. maybe another week, or do you want to just yeah, go ahead and take the ball get, on yeah. that one? So, you betcha. Um, the public, uh, the, the PR release went out. Essentially, that is effective January, thir- January 31st. So mm. Wayne LaPierre will be done with the NRA on January 31st. At that point, there'll be a new person who assumes that responsibility, uh, phenomenal guy. And on top of that, Wayne is not going to have any goings on with the board, with consulting, with management. Literally, he is gone from the NRA in every manner or facet. So January 31st is the drop dead date. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks, Joey. Yeah, probably should have used different terminology. Um, but January 31st, he is done. And uh, so that issue should no longer uh, plague the NRA. 
Yeah, and we talked a little bit before we went on air. Sorry, guys, we were hanging out talking before you joined us, so you don't you don't get to see all the cool stuff. But uh, I told them, or I told Isaac, that's the biggest complaint that we get. Not biggest complaint, I should say, but biggest hang up at the end of class when we're talking about joining the NRA is the person who complains is typically someone who's like, I would, but you know, the Lavier guy, like you know, X, Y, and Z for whatever reason yeah. that they can come up with to because they don't want to spend the money on it is really what yeah. it is, you know. Um, so that's, that's something like, I hate, hate to say it, but Mm -hmm. it is something that will probably help out. I, I agree. I, to a certain extent, right? Like if that's, if that's their thought of, well, I don't want to send my money to buy Mm -hmm. new suits for somebody, right? Or for somebody to live a, a lavish lifestyle or whatever the controversy is there. First of all. You don't understand the game, so understand that going into it. There's there's certain things that you got to kind of play the game with. Like, you can't show up in sweatpants. You <laughs> might need a nice suit. Right. Right? Um, but if that was everybody's holdup, mm-hmm. first of all, they've got someone different in the money realm of the organization right now. And, and I, can, I can assure all of you where Isaac wants to make sure an impact is made in terms of using their resources and funding to restore our rights. Am I, am I speaking out of line on that, Isaac? Not at all. Uh, that was literally, even in my first year, that was probably the biggest impact I made was as a new member, they were coming to me going, okay, what do we do about this issue? And I was walking them through the financial guidance on that. The I have tore apart the NRA books. And I've had people who have opposed the NRA tear apart those books. And the reality is, right now, the NRA is not only lean and mean, but they are fulfilling their fiduciary responsibility to their membership. And you guys know that I am not blowing smoke when I say that. If I say mm-hmm. that the NRA is squeaky clean, and that they are fiduciarily responsible right now, they are as good as it's going to get. They are doing the right thing by the members with every dime that they've got. Hell yeah. That's what, because that's what I was going to ask is like, are they putting your expertise to use? And it sounds like they are. 